What is up guys, Top Tier Yu-Gi-Oh here, and today I've got a Dogmatica Zodiac deck profile. And this is a deck that I am so excited to share because, personally, this has been what I've been playing and enjoying the most since Rise of the Duelist because, I mean, for one, I just love both of these archetypes, I love both Zodiacs and Dogmaticas, but also I think there's a lot of really interesting synergy between these two archetypes and engines, and I think that this current format has created a... A situation where both of these decks together are very very powerful so let's go ahead and get into the profile but before doing that if you would like to support the channel i'd really appreciate it by the way please consider doing so by liking this video and subscribing because it does help this channel out a ton so thank you so much for those of you who do and who are already subscribed but let's go ahead and get into this profile because again i'm so excited for this all right so, so moving into the profile i want to start with the dogmatica engine because these are the new cards and for that we play three copies of nadir servant this card is absolutely insane i mean i'm sure you guys have all seen it in action by now but the ability to send the card from the extra deck to the graveyard as well as search a dogmatica card from deck to hand is just two powerful effects because of one what you're seeing what you're sending is going to have a really good graveyard effect but also what you're searching is going to have multiple strong on field effects as well and so you really get a ton of value out of nadir servant and in my opinion this is the best singular card out of rise of the duels i think it's better than triple tack i think it's better than droplets this is the best card we've seen in a long long time and so definitely got to play three of that next we have three copies of ecclesia Let's see, yeah, three copies of Ecclesia. This is what you're usually searching off of your Nadir Servant. And this deck in particular, it's very easy to summon because of how easy it is to get into our extra deck. Like, it's so easy to just put a Dryden on board, special Ecclesia, get the effect to search something, and then keep your Dogmatica engine going. And then you're ending up with multiple negates and disruptions from both of these engines combined. And so I think there's, again, a ton of great synergy here. And so I definitely like Triple Ecclesia a lot because, it's, again, it's so easy to summon then the effect is obviously uh, powerful. Next, we have two copies of Fleur de Lis. This is a lot of times what you're searching off of the Ecclesia, but a lot of people only think of it in terms of negation, but it also has a really good effect for boosting your Dogmatica monster's attacks. And that really, really helps you go for game easier, which is a problem that Zodiacs, uh, well, pure Zodiacs have with their own engine. It's kind of difficult to go for game with them, but with Fleur de Lis, this plus an Ecclesia is already 5,000 once you use the effect. Two Ecclesias plus Florida Lisa is 7,000. And that plus almost any Zodiac monster is probably going to be game. And so this really helps you go for game while also giving you some negation on top of that. And so uh, I definitely like two copies of Florida Lisa. And then finally for the Zoo, or I'm sorry, for the Dogmatica monsters, we have two copies of Maximus. And Maximus is incredible in this deck because I think that we're able to utilize it better than a lot of other decks because of how easy it is to get Zodiac monsters and Zodiac Xyz monsters both on the field and into the graveyard. And so it's very easy to summon. Like we can just make Dryden and use the effect. That's going to get something in the grave. So it's very easy to summon, very easy to, to utilize because of what we can send to the grave. Like your your regular standard Dogmatica cards like Numping your Entis or your Omega, which is also insane for shuffling back your Drydens and whatnot. But you know those cards are good your titan clads of course yeah but also in this deck we can dump our zodiac Xyz monsters and then shuffle them back with combo and so it helps combo be more more live as well and so maximus can serve kind of multiple purposes and like that we can either use it for our dogmatica cards by dumping into his titan clad stuff like that or we can use it for our zoo engine by dumping zoo Xyz cards for for combo or dumping omega to shuffle back our zoo engine then on top of that, we also have a Shadal engine that we're playing as well. And so we can utilize that as well with Maximus. And so it's easy to summon, easy to utilize, and very easy to take advantage of. And so that's why I think two copies of Maximus is correct in this deck. And while I do think that, yes, your opponent can play cards like like uh, Mechaba and Cyber Dragon Nova in their extra deck to counter it or other copies of Intus, yeah, they can do that. But I think that not enough people are doing it to, to warrant not playing Maximus. The only really downside is if you're playing a Mirror Magic against Invoked or against another Dogmatica deck, but that's a risk I think I'm willing to take here. And then the final Dogmatica cards are two copies of Punishment, just an insane trap card. Again, being able to destroy a card on your opponent's side of the field as well as dump an extra deck card is just so much value. And then finally, we play one copy of Shadal Shism, which isn't a Dogmatica card, but we utilize it with a Dogmatica engine by sending Shadal App Cologne to the grave, which allows us to search this, and then we can add it back from grave to hand with, 
uh, or we don't have to even dump it to the grave, we can keep it in hand, but we can use another Shadal to add it back to the hand, set it, and this gives us access to window on the opponent's turn. And so there are a lot of games to where you're passing with like Dryden plus either Punishment or Florida Lees, and then having a Shism set, which gives you access to a window. And so your opponent's gonna have to deal with a pop or, ne or negate, a second pop, and then not be able to special summon more than once. And in most cases, that's just game. And so uh, Shism is definitely a great addition to this deck. But that's pretty much it for the Dogmatica engine. For the Zodiac engine, I'm actually playing a lot of a smaller lineup than I normally do, at least compared to a pure zoo deck. But for this, I'm only playing one copy of Rat, one copy of Ram Ram, one copy of Bunny Blast, one copy of Whiptail, and then the only one that I'm playing multiples of is Thoroughblade. And so I went with multiple Thoroughblades because I definitely wanted to keep the zoo count high still, but Thoroughblade is the one that is only good in, not only good in multiples, but it's the one that's best in multiples, and it allows you to play a high number of zoos anyways, because if you draw too many, if one of them is Thoroughblade, it's going to allow you to draw more into your deck, maybe draw into a Servant or an Ecclesia or a Desires or any of your other powerful cards in this deck. And so I felt that Thoroughblade was one that I could play in multiples as opposed to like a Ram Ram or a Whiptail. Especially Whiptail, which I felt that even in a pure deck, multiples was never like insane or anything. Like it never really came out that often outside of just being a zoo monster. And now Ram Ram is something I would like to play more of personally, just because of right now it's so good being able to combo because people aren't playing Nib. But I felt that two Thoroughblade is definitely the correct choice. And then finally, we're playing three copies of Tinky, one Barrage, and then one copy of Combo. And now I do generally like playing more copies of combo because I think that efficiency is very important in the Zodiac deck. However, in this current metagame, the, the games just aren't going that long. The games are relatively short, and so efficiency isn't as important as I think power and consistency right now. And I felt that combo was a card that I could cut to make more space for more powerful cards that are going to help me win games uh, immediately. And so while it's still good, I think that we can get away with just one because there's no... no popular decks right now that we're going to be grinding with where we need you know two or three copies and this one really still allows us to get like five or six util uh five or six utilizations of our dryden like we can heart summon dryden once we can revive it twice with shaka nine so that gets us up to three and then combo is going to shuffle back the dryden and the shaka nine so that's two more uses out of it plus we have cards like omega they revive it as well and so or not revive it but to shuffle it back into the extra deck and so we have so many ways to utilize dryden multiple times even though we're only playing one copy of combo and so i felt that we can really get away with this and again make space for more powerful cards because combo is great but we all know it's not it's not like a game changing card in this current format at least if the format were slower it would be insane but not right now so that's it for the Zodiac engine. Next for the hand traps, we have three copies of Ash, three or two copies of Ogre, and then three copies of Imperm. And so I think Imperm and Ash are definitely staple three of their two of the three best hand traps in this current format, with the third being Gamma. Gamma being so good because it both negates an effect and destroys it. And so I, I really think that Gamma is the best, but I don't play it in the main deck because in this current, in the way the deck is constructed, your opponent really isn't going to be using Gamma while you have no cards on the field if you're going first. And so it's really only good going second, and I felt it was best to just side it in that scenario versus dead drawing at game ones, or turn ones. So that's why I'm choosing to not main that Gamma. But Ogre, I felt, was like the next closest thing because with Zodiacs, you, you do sometimes have problems removing stuff from board, as well as with the Dogmatica engine, because you don't always want to use Punishment if that's going to lock you out of the extra deck. And so you need other ways to get rid of opponent's monsters outside of Punishment, outside of Entis, and outside of Dryden. And I felt that Ogre was a great way to do that, as well as being a way to stop combos. And so that's why I went with Ogre versus any other hand trap. But I would say that... You could increase the hand trap count right now because eight may or may not be enough. I found it fine, but you know I definitely wouldn't mind maybe having ten, maybe eleven. So that's something you can maybe change if you wanted to uh, make some adjustments. And now finally to wrap up the deck, we have some of the most powerful spell cards in the current format, in the current metagame, and probably ever printed. We have three copies of Triple Tack three copies of Desires, and then two copies of Cosmic Cyclone. And so, 
Uh, Cosmic Cyclone, I think, is insane, this current format, because of its its versatility in so many different matchups. I mean, against everything except for Adamancipators, you're going to be able to use Cosmic Cyclone very, very well. I mean, against Eldritch, obviously, against Invoked, obviously, but even against decks like Dragon Link and against uh, Infernoble Knight, you're still going to be able to hit some very powerful cards with this, such as like Phalanx and Boot against Dragons, and then against Infernoble Knights, you can hit cards like Durandal and other equips, and so... These can be incredibly valuable in almost every single matchup. And then triple attack, I mean, wow. You have three band effects in a single card. And I think that just being able to use that in here just makes this deck so much better. And being able to make the deck more consistent between that and the desires, it's so easy to draw into our power cards, such as our tankies, our barrages, our nadir servants. We're, we're able to get to those so easily with these six that I think that... Uh, they're worth playing. It makes this deck so consistent, so powerful, and I've personally been loving it. I went to this over a card like Forbidden Droplets because I felt that Droplets sometimes required way too many resources to really use effectively. Like if I was dealing with a big board, I would never want to have to discard or get rid of like two to three of my own cards in order to play. I felt that it was better to just give myself more than to negate the opponents, if that makes any sense. Like you want to play in a complex game state versus a simplified one, and I felt that triple attack is one that complicates the game state as opposed to droplets, which simplifies it. And so kind of on a theoretical level, I felt that maybe triple attack was going to be a better choice. But also I felt that it has a higher ceiling, like being able to take a card from the opponent's hand or take control of an opponent's monster is, it has the potential to be a lot better than just negating them. Like taking a Dragoon is sometimes in my opinion, better than negating it because if you take a Dragoon, you can clear your opponent's board too, and then maybe deal a bunch of burn damage and then extend past that and go for game. Whereas if you're just negating the Dragoon, well, you still have to deal with it and you, your opponent still might have other monsters that you might need to destroy or get rid of as well. Or taking a card from the opponent's hand. Taking an opponent's starter card is, can it, well, it can be in some cases a lot better than just negating one or two of their monsters. And so again, I feel that like, if you choose correctly and you play triple attack correctly and optimally, there's a chance that it can be better than droplets. I feel like I'm explaining that really badly, but I've been liking uh, triple attack a lot better than droplets when I was testing that. So, For the extra deck, we have one copy of Dryden, one Borbo, one Hammer Kong, two Tiger Mortar, two Shock and Iron, and then one copy of Mega Clops, which again, I think is so incredible right now that people are starting to drop Nib because it makes it so safe and easy to drop a Mega Clops and then drop an Ecclesia and then go through your entire Dogmatica engine. And then you end on like a monster that your opponent can't really interact with that's huge and deals with their board on top of your Dogmatica stuff too. I think this card is insane right now. So that's pretty much it for the Zodiac engine. For the Dogmatica cards, we have one copy of Titan Clad, Two copies of Entis, pretty much one for your servant, one for your punishment. Then we have one copy of Omega, once again for recycling things back. And then we have Wenda, App Cologne, and Construct. So App Cologne and Construct, uh, or I'm sorry, App Cologne and Wenda, I think are definitely necessary for your Shism plays. But Construct is like the 15th card that I've really been going back and forth on because on one hand, it lets you add back your Shism from the graveyard so that you can do your combos without having to discard which is, which is great, but on the other hand, you don't really need it, and so I felt that maybe a second Titan Clad might be good for grinding, maybe more Zoo cards, or maybe even some other extra deck cards might be good, like a Unicorn or an IP, and so let me know what you guys think. What should the 15th card in this extra deck be? Right now, I'm on Construct, but maybe something else might be better, and then finally for the side deck, uh, and, and as always, the side deck is very subjective. Feel free to change anything for whatever is going to make more sense for you in your current and local metagame. But for me, I've been playing three copies of Gamma and Driver because it's the best hand trap. Then, let's see, three copies of Droll and Lockbird because it's really good against Invoked. If they start with any of their, actually any of their starter plays, this stops. Like, if they start with an Ecclesia, or if they start with a Servant, this stops the Ecclesia. If they start with a meltdown this is going to stop the alistair and everything afterwards i mean there's so many cards that they have in their deck that search and that droll just becomes really ridiculous so i've definitely been liking it in that matchup uh then we have three copies of dimensional barrier because i feel that right now on one hand it's good against invoked but really i like it against the noble knight deck because their deck is like 90 percent synchro monsters 
And playing this really stops them from doing much of anything because the Link monsters they play don't really do anything either. I mean, I mean they do stuff, but not really threatening things. Like Needle Fiber is sold, Auroradon. Sure, they can summon tokens and stuff, but they're not really threatening you with that. And so I felt that Barrier is kind of insane in that matchup. And then, let's see, there are three copies of Mystic Mine because you need some going second cards. And I feel that Mystic Mine is something that... Uh, you, you can really just utilize better than a lot of other decks because of Borbo. And so if we can have mine up with a Borbo, it puts the opponent on a on a five turn clock because Thoroughblade under a Borbo is 8,000 damage if you attack directly five times. And so your opponent has five turns to deal with this mine before they lose. And so I really like that interaction. And then finally, we play one copy of Pancratops and one Cosmic Cyclone. Pancratops, I think, is insane because it's one of the only cards that deals with two disruptions by itself. So, definitely you need Pancratops and Cosmic is Cosmic. And so, when I'm going first, in a lot of cases, I'll be siding in, like, well, the barriers against against uh, Infernoble Knights. But in most matchups, I felt that the main deck is already pretty good going first. But Cosmic Cyclone is something that I would consider siding in, depending on the matchup. Probably would side it in. And then going second, you have Mine and Gamma in pretty much every matchup, plus the Pancratops. And then against the against the Invoked, you have the Drolls as well. So we have mostly stuff for going second, minus the Barriers, which I've been testing going first. But the main deck is already really strong going first, because all you need to do is draw a Zoo card or a Servant, and you're pretty much good to go, because you're going to be able to get through your entire, well, really both engines, and, and they'll very likely, again, Dryden or Mega Clops, plus... Ecclesia and either Floor or Punishment and then Winda through your Schism. So it's very easy to end on these powerful boards where you're locking your opponent out of Winda then having these auxiliary disruptions with again Punishment or Dryden or something like that. So if you guys would like to see any sort of combos let me know in the comment section because I could definitely do a combo video if you guys would like. Uh, I just don't want to make this video too long and so I'm, I guess I'll save that for another time but if you guys would like to see that let me know for sure because I would love to do a combo video. And so um that's pretty much it. That's the main side and extra. Let me know what you guys think about this deck. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. I'm always open to suggestions and tips, changes. I'm definitely just trying to make this deck a lot better, and so I'm hoping that by 